Hey everybody, today we're going to do this little bit of vlogs. We're going to go out and check a local shop that I just found out about. We'll set up some retro games there, some arcades. Let's see what there is. I'm going to take a few trades with me and maybe we can come back with something new. Let's do it. Alright, so we're here. We're getting ready to go to the Vintage Nerd and we're just going to check it out. You guys ready? When I first walked into this place, I couldn't lie, I was excited. It had everything. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, even Dungeons and Dragons figures, play sets, and collectibles. Not to mention Magic the Gathering. This, I knew, was a place for us. I probably spent well over an hour scouring the shelves, looking under every corner and crevice trying to find that hidden gem. There it was, behind the glass shelf, a game I had always wanted, Mega Man. Not only that, but this store had a few other treasures to offer. To include a full Atari 2600 with games, Gradius 3, my Mega Man 3, because I couldn't afford the original Mega Man, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles King of Fighters 11 and a little something that Reggie talked about Star Ocean for the PlayStation 2 Guys, we just got done at the Vintage Game Nerd in Missa, Oregon We're going to show you our pickups here when we get home um, Look at a little bit what we paid for and See how we did. So we were talking a little bit in the car, and we're just going to include you guys in this conversation. So we're talking about the game room, setting up the game room. And what consoles are mandatory in a game room? And I think it's a good conversation to have. We're just having this conversation of like the 2600 is kind of a system that has to be in the game room. I mean, especially for someone who's born in 1974. So I was five, six playing adventure at my house as a kid. I have memories of playing adventure. I have memories of Breakout. I have memories of, you know, Missile Command and those kind of games. And so my children, probably not so much, but as an adult, or if you're making a retro game room, right? Like, is the 2600 necessary piece of hardware to have in your game? And that's the question that we're asking. So leave the comments in below. Let me know what you think. Is a 2600 necessary? Or can you just start with the NES and then move forward with the Super Nintendo, Genesis, Master System, that kind of stuff? Okay, so we are back. And I just want to kind of show you a little bit of what we picked up today. So I ended up picking a complete um, Atari 2600 with paddles and joysticks. The fun is back! Oh yes, sirree! It's the 2600 from Atari! It's the video system with classics galore From Space Invaders to cars that roar A real hip joystick controls the screen So lawless is hot and midnight magic's mean And one more thing, it's got a special low price Under 50 bucks! 50 bucks? Now isn't that nice? The fun is back! Oh yes, sirree! It's the 2600 from Atari! And then it also came with the gentleman's collection of games. There's 16 games here, and a lot of them are games that I played a lot as a kid. And it also came with these strategy guides, so, you know, you need to brush up on your Atari gaming skills. And it did have all of the different brochures and paperwork that came with the games. So that's really cool. I love the art on that. Missile Command, obviously, I love the art on Missile Command. So much, in fact, I have it on my wall. And then moving along, I was watching one of Radical Reggie's videos on PlayStation stuff. He recommended the game Star Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> 
enjoy our SNK and our Neo Geo stuff, so had to pick up anything SNK related, and we got King of Fighters 11. Always trying to find shoot 'em ups. Love me my shoot 'em ups, and so here we have Gradius 3. It's a 1989 scrolling shooter video game developed and published by Konami. Originally released for the arcades in Japan and other parts of Asia on December 11th, 1989. The game was ported to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in Japan in 1990 and released to North America in 1991. There are a total of 10 levels in the game, with stage 4 being something of a bonus level. Unlike previous games in the series, Gradius 3 does not include a continuation feature. If the player loses all his or her lives, the game will be over. There are also two hidden levels that are based on earlier sections of Gradius and Salamander. All in all, Gradius 3 is a must-have, in my opinion, for the Super Nintendo. And a Final Fantasy Chronicles. GameCube. Crystal Chronicles was released in North America in 2004 and was developed by the Game Designer Studios. And had to get me a Mega Man game, right? Mega Man 3, it may not be the best Mega Man game, but it's my Mega Man game. Mega Man 3, or Rockman 3, as it was known in Japan, was released September 28, 1990. It later came to North America in November of that year, and didn't reach Europe until 1992. Mega Man 3 introduced new mechanics such as the canine sidekick Rush and the ability to slide along the ground. This time around, the action takes place in the year 20XX, and Dr. Wily begins to work with Dr. Light. They are trying to build a robot named Gamma, a peacekeeping robot. Now Mega Man is called into action with his canine companion Rush to retrieve special crystals to help the doctors create the ultimate mining robot. Now Dr. Wily's good deeds don't last long, and he once again makes plans to take over the world after stealing Gamma. In this epic quest, help Dr. Light stop Dr. Wily by defeating him before he takes over the world.
So, in my collection, it is my best Mega Man game now. So, I'm very excited to add that to the collection. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoy these pickups, these finds, these game hunts. And, um, as always, happy gaming.